The enduring nature of sculpture places a special responsibility on the shoulders of the artists who create it. The universality of figurative sculpture makes it a language that is accessible to all and for all time. With these truths in mind, it is with great excitement that we follow the development of ideas for a major monument by Richard MacDonald for the Royal Ballet in England. There are pivotal moments in history when something precious can be lost, if not for the intervention of an individual. Dame Ninette de Valois took up the challenge at one of these moments and transplanted the fragile seedling of the extraordinary tradition of the ballet's ruse into the fertile soil of the British ballet. British dance today owes its strength and its vitality to the untiring life's work of Dame Ninette de Valois. In her words, we hear her philosophy. You cannot have innovation without a firm bedrock of tradition. In the dark and difficult post-war period, Dame Ninette de Valois staged a performance of Sleeping Beauty at Covent Garden in 1946 for the British royal family. It was a stunning success and led to her company becoming the resident ballet corps of the Royal Opera House and ultimately to the granting of the Royal Charter in 1956, thus creating the Royal Ballet. From this point on, White Lodge served as the Royal Ballet School and has produced some of the most legendary and beloved dancers of the 20th century and up to the present day. Dame de Valois knew how to recognize talent and how to develop it at White Lodge and beyond. From the early days of Margot Fontaine and Rudolf Nureyev, through the time of Antoinette Sibley and Anthony Dowell, all the way to the triumphs of recent stars such as Darcy Bussell and Jonathan Cope, the living legacy of Dame Ninette de Valois has been one of exquisite beauty in classical dance. Shining newcomers like Sergei Polonin are testimony to the continued vitality of the tradition she founded so long ago. Now, in 2009, a new artist has been introduced to White Lodge, the world-renowned figurative sculptor Richard MacDonald. With the goal of commemorating the priceless contribution Dame Ninette de Valois made to the cultural life of the British people, Richard MacDonald is working on the creation of a glorious suite of heroic bronze figures as part of a permanent monument at White Lodge. Recently, Richard MacDonald was invited to London for a royal gala event where His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales was given a private showing of his art. The artwork displayed at this event made such a strong impression that the request was made for it to remain on display at White Lodge for an extended period. Prepared by his own lifelong dedication to dance and decades of work inspired by ballet, Richard MacDonald has created many significant public monuments. Most notably, there is the Flare, a 26-foot-tall bronze depicting the triumph of the human spirit that stands in the Georgia International Plaza in Atlanta, where it was placed for the 1996 Olympic Games. In 2000, Richard MacDonald's Momentum, a 15-foot-tall bronze celebrating the 100th anniversary of the US Open Golf Tournament, was dedicated in Pebble Beach, California. Award-winning works like the magnificent Nureyev, Doves, and Flight in Attitude record the artist's fascination with the beauty of dance. Through an intensive period of study from life, Richard MacDonald will draw and sculpt the dancers, novices and principals alike, to gain a thorough understanding of the life of a dancer. I'm doing a lot of studies. I'm doing a sculpture every day, studying the different kinds of dance, the different movements, uh, understanding what a panche is, what a panche passage is, uh, and uh, going through that process. So I start with a quarter life size um, uh, subject matter because that's easy for me to work. It's small, I can do it a lot quicker. With this, I will start deciding in my mind which of these move me. I don't know exactly why. I have a piece right behind us that I did, and there's something about it. It's so simple, but it's so elegant, and it, and it somehow touches me. That's the way the creative process works. I allow it to talk to me. 
I don't, I don't really try to force it, but I search and I search. And I'm relentless about the search until I start finding something that moves me. The artist has a highly developed ability to capture the essence of a dancer's gesture, personality, and individual style of movement by watching them as he works directly into the clay. He does not work from stiff, unnatural poses, so the finished sculptures have a fluid sense of motion and a palpable energy and dynamism. The steps from life study, drawing, and sculpting to the creation of a finished monument are many and complex. Richard MacDonald proposes an outer circle of figures that depict the earliest phases of a young dancer's career. These figures will lead the viewer to the inner circle of more advanced and confident older dancers. Set in the center, in a reflecting pool of water, the artist envisions a grand composition of multiple figures, balanced and graceful. This central coda would complete the narrative sequence of the sculptures and give the viewer an opportunity to ponder the vital living art form that is classical dance. Architectural elements such as lighting and positioning relative to existing features are always carefully considered by Richard MacDonald as integral components of any finished artwork. Richard MacDonald is known for his skills in capturing nuances of character in portrait sculpture. He suggests a bas-relief portrait in bronze of Dame Ninette de Valois as a permanent reminder of the remarkable woman who first established the Royal Ballet and School and the standards of excellence that she set so long ago. It is fitting that Dame Ninette de Valois be memorialized by a work of art worthy of the artistic legacy she left behind. This is to celebrate the people, the Royal Ballet, the significance of dance, uh, the significance of the Royal Ballet in dance. And then at the end, the significance of Dame Nanette de Valois, who created this entire thing herself. As dancers come to White Lodge, full of youthful dreams, many generations from now, it is hoped that Richard MacDonald's monument will be there as the voice of Dame Nanette de Valois, urging them to dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to their art and reach for excellence in all they do.